All right, thank you so much. Uh, we've got Money Mike Modesty, it's a labor devotee. Uh, he's joining us uh, virtually. Good morning, Money Mike. Good morning, everyone. So yeah. Happy Workers' Day to all of you. Yeah, happy Workers' Day to you. Uh, you know that uh, the International Labor's Day, let's domesticate it to Nigeria now. We uh, celebrate it here the way all the nations of the world celebrate it. And uh, is it is set aside to talk about a whole lot as it relates to workers, uh, fair uh, regime, and of course, uh, you know, ways we can improve uh, workers' pay and all that and all that. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, improving the relationship between uh, the government now and, uh, you know, workers in the country. Let's start from there. What ways can we improve this relationship? Well, thank you for the question. And once again, let me wish all the viewers a very, very pleasurable Workers' Day 2024. Uh, as per the question you've just asked, improving relationship. Uh, the thing is uh, between two forces, the political forces and the, the workers. The political forces see themselves to be very, very superior to those who turn the wheel of the economy. They see themselves as superiors and in all ramifications when it comes to the issue of workers' welfare, most of them really don't take such issues very serious. You are fully aware of the prevailing situation having to do with the national new minimum wage negotiation. The federal government or the government of the federation, vis a vis the state governments, have not been able to put their cards on the table on what they are capable of paying. The table has made a proposal of over 600,000. And yes, as we speak, government has not made any counter offer. Only yesterday night, the federal government, through the National Incomes and Wages Commission, I brought out a circular to the effect that uh, they are raising the salary of federal workers between of between 25 to 35 percent across about six or seven consolidated salary structures. And that is a peanuts compared to the prevailing economic situation in the country. Unfortunately, it is uh, to be said that uh, even the politicians themselves cannot say true in their uh, financial uh, dealings without the cooperation of the workers too. So in one breath, the workers are indirect, directly and indirectly involved in shooting themselves in their feet to the glory of the political leaders. And uh, in another breath, for them, the political leaders do not seem to know how to reciprocate by doing that which is genuinely meant for the workforce. As of today, you know the cost of a bag of rice. The national minimum wage as of 2011 equaled about $160. Today, that has plummeted far below $30. If as of 2011, a Nigerian worker was earning about $165 as minimum wage, and today we are talking about $30, so to speak, that tells you how we have retrogressed partly as far as the working conditions of the Nigerian workers is concerned. Be that as it may, we are looking forward no longer to even a minimum wage because the way things are going now, the economy is running riots in all ramifications, and the workers and their family members, as well as extended family members, are bearing the brunt. You are fully aware that a worker has multiplicity of dependence by way of our extended family culture, norms, and traditions. If you are a worker who is earning a minimum wage of 30,000, you are expected to trickle that 30,000 down to your grandfather, your grandmother, your nephews, your cousins, and all those who are not working within you, within your family lineage. But it's rather unfortunate that things have since fallen apart. The center is not holding. Mayor Anarchy has been loosed upon all the entire workforces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and those whom we have chosen or are elected to lead us to provide a very comfortable condition of service to us are looking the other way. Whereas those at the National Assembly are busy packing billions 
those are the executive are busy having access to billions and the workers themselves do not have such opportunities. It's rather very unfortunate. For now, let me stop there. Okay, uh, you talked about uh, the increased, uh, you know, percentage in salaries that has just been given to workers, 25% and 35%. Uh, we understand that uh, the NSC has rejected that. Uh, for, yes, in total, in total. Uh, yeah, but uh, for a labor unionism, a labor union that uh, seek a robust relationship with the federal government, I mean, one would have expected that... Uh, uh, they should take that first, uh, because uh, we know that the issue of the minimum wage is still around the corner. The way you raise the, way the, 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 the present increase or rise, the raise they have given to the uh, something, is it a, a, an outcome of collective bargaining? Or it is uh, a fiat, it came to a fiat. Are you aware that the, the condemnation issue of minimum wage is a constitutional matter? Mm. As we speak, the Federal Republic of Nigeria does not have any law as part of the new minimum wage because the old law has expired. Must we continue in lawlessness? So when... And they, will, and they will tell you in administration there's no vacuum in administration. Why would they create vacuum in our laws? Why would they allow a particular law that is, a, that is derived from the Constitution to expire? Is mm. that not a breach of the Constitution? Mm. And what follows the breach of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? And that is the constitution they have all sworn to uphold. So they going by the tenets of their of their oaths. Yeah. So whatever the labor is saying is correct. We are not asking for for peanuts. Let's sit on the table, negotiate, as provided in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and let's agree. Why must they continue to food drag? The committee was constituted, the committee was never were allowed to meet until months. Now the first of May has come, and the old law expired last month. The old law expired on the first of March. April is gone; nothing is done. May is going. Today is the first of May. For how long must they continue this lip service? For how long must they continue this betrayal of trust? For how long will they continue to match the workers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? And for how long will our politicians continue to see themselves as superior animals than the rest of us? So how long? Yeah, so what we are saying, what you are saying rather, is uh, that this 25 and 35 percent uh, increase for workers is it's not, it's not negotiated. Peanuts. But was it negotiated? Was it negotiated with labor? So why would the federal government say that they have uh, approved? I mean, when you say you have approved something, it shows that uh, it was negotiated, people had it contributions. Was, it was never negotiated. It was never negotiated. They never consulted. Mm. Maybe they, they, they are using this technically to make it look like they are not running foul of the provision of the Constitution. That the new minimum wish has, which has expired and would go in by what they have done now. They have technically and cleverly met the, uh, the provisions of the Constitution. But a wage, a wage uh, this, uh, this is another form of wage award. What they have done is another form of wage award. It's, does not, it does not tally with the national minimum wage law. All right, so we, we, are, we have become laughing stocks. Mm. In developed plans, salaries are increased, new minimum wages are fixed, unannounced. Mm. There are templates that are in place by the governments. It's oh. agreed to by labor organizations. You only wake up to see a, 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 the implementation of such uh, agreements without any announcement. Once now we are talking about between 25% and 35%, which are us. But the market man, the market woman, will not care to know the sum that is stopping up now. Mm. And inflation that has gone over, over, over the roof, we move to the highest heavens. Okay. Here now that even a token has been added. It's trouble. So why not do the needful? Because if you are indirectly telling us, okay, maybe this one is a so-called for now, and maybe we'll continue with the negotiation. When the negotiation is completed and the new wage is, uh, is announced, definitely you're also sending the wrong signal to our people who are in the business communities, who are in the markets. 
that we should also increase their prices. There is no price control mechanism in existence. So the, whatever they are adding is as useless as not even adding anything at all. Uh, but, but, but we should, I mean, uh, comp uh, looking at where we are coming from, I think uh, we should uh, give kudos to the government. I mean, uh, okay, Evans, yeah, Evans. yeah. Now, let the federal government announce $165 as minimum wage. Mm. As it was in 2011. Mm. Why did they not give $165 as it was in 2011? Use that percentage across board as a salary raise. For workers who are not paying with the new minimum wage, we are agreed upon. Who is fooling who? Mm. The dollar is over 1,400 1, or something naira as we speak. About 1,300 naira. 1,300 or something. It was 1,400. Mm. In some places. Mm. So if in 2011, when we're any minimum wage of 18,000 and we're earning 165 dollars, multiply 165 dollars by 1,400. Mm. Mm. All right, so... Uh, just, just conservatively, conservatively. So, and the prices of goods and services are on the rise, unending, unending. Nobody is thinking of how to mitigate or how to even control the prices. Nobody. People are dying by the day. People cannot even afford their, 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 their daily uh, uh, medications. A lot of people are dying, unannounced. Families can't even have square me a square meal in a day. A lot of families in this country are no longer having a square meal in a day. How much is Gary now? That used to be an ordinary staple for all of us. Even the granite we used to buy, uh, one, one cup or two cup or five naira. How much is the granite now? How many parents are able to pay the school fees of their children? How many governments are making the schools comfortable, public schools comfortable for the children of the poor to attend? How many of our schools have teachers to teach our children? How many uh, government hospitals can treat our, our, our family members? Do you know that government hospitals are even becoming more expensive than private hospitals now? All right, so. They are granting independence to all government hospitals now to charge whatever they like to be able to, to meet uh, their financial estimates. So who is fooling who? Our farmers, security, insecurity is everywhere. Our farmers cannot even go to farm. No, no cultivation, nothing, nothing is happening. People cannot, okay, how much is electricity? How often do we get electricity in our homes? The average Nigerian worker is expected to cater for his accommodation, to provide the roads, the great dead roads, great roads to his community, to provide water for himself, virtually everything. And these actions have snowballing effects on members of the family and the extended families and members in the same community. Do you know that people still has boggling are all on the, on the increase now? Uh, uh, come, let, let's come off that now. Uh, you know, let's talk a bit of uh, you know some welfare package that the government has been given to. Uh, workers in, in the country. We honestly, we know that uh, the issue of the economy is on everybody as it uh, concerns Nigerians uh, today. Uh, but, but let's look at ways that uh, the government has also improved on uh, the welfare of workers, uh, you know, trying to uh, see that workers are trained, retrained, and all that. So I think we should also give kudos to, to government on that. I mean, that has been ongoing for quite some time now, for over uh, four years as far as I'm concerned. Which, you, you may, I mean, wish to know which government, federal government? Federal government. Oh, training or retraining? Yes. Do you know, for instance, if you send somebody to Harvard for training, mm. and he comes back, there's no food in the house. Whatever amount you have spent in that training is useless. When the children are crying, he can't pay school fees, he can't provide some basic medical uh, uh, services uh, for, for, for the family members, he can't even pay house rent. Mm. Somebody, some, some, somebody needs some money, he cannot even get it. It's as good as building an institution with billions of dollars, yet the people you have employed to work there are not happy. You think that system will be productive? It will not be productive. And let me tell you, surreptitiously, so most of those things they do, when you have to have a trainer, a trainer, they also use those siphon phones. They 
use it to set for force from the treasury. Let me tell you, go to our uh, national NYC camps right now and see the food the children are eating. See the water they are giving to them as soup. Go there and find out. Go there as I'm talking to you and find out. The water they are serving to them as soup. Yeah, but that, that may not be the fault of the federal government. It may be in the hands of uh, the managers. If you are looking for resources, are you not supposed to have a supervisory role over resources? Do you mm. assign a huge, a huge amount of money? Then you sit comfortably in your office and roll in your, in your, in your chair and I, I expect beautiful results to come to you without supervision. A lot of things. Our police force, do you know that many of them, are, the police officers are the ones who are providing their, their shoes, their boots, and their uniforms? Do you know they are the ones providing for themselves? Mm, but, but, but their salary has also been increased uh, by this. Their salary, their salary, their salary, you may not understand what I'm talking about. I understand, about. I understand what you're saying. What I'm talking about yeah. is so, so very shameful. Salary. Mm. How much is a bag of rice, our local rice? Mm. So in all of all this now, uh, where should we start from? How do we go about it all? Transparency in all ramifications. Truthfulness. Both from the side of those who we have chosen to lead us. And even the workers who are working. We have to be true to ourselves. Now, we are talking about the economy. I wish to propose. Leave the minimum wage the way it is now. Mm. Make sure we all have free access to health, medical health. Make sure that all our institutions are fixed. Make sure our roads are working. Make sure that our farmers can go back to farm and produce for us to eat. Make sure all these critical sectors are functional. Institutions working. Not few human beings more powerful than institutions. When you are able to do this, the children of the poor can go to public school like we did in the past. The children of the poor can go to universities without uh, uh, putting heavy burden of school fees on them that they cannot even pay. Books are make, made available. We have free access to pipe bomb water. Public electricity system works. Fix all these things and leave the minimum wage wages and see whether the dollar will itself will not even crash. Mm. They are there ever contemplating on how to fix any of this. Do they contemplate? Although I don't want to overgeneralize because there are some state governments that are doing pretty well to the best of their abilities. Yeah, just just uh, two days ago, the other state governments increased, uh, you know, minimum wage from 40,000 naira to 70,000 naira. I mean, you started your un labor unionism in Edo state here. Uh, what yeah. is your reaction to that? Yes, Edo state, to the best of my knowledge, has remained a peace setting state. Okay. As far as workers' welfare is concerned, although it is not completely Uhuru, yet. But the dimension to which the government has always gone with the workers of the state is a worldwide dimension. But that is not to say there are no lacunas here and there too. Why I will continue to commend the government for taking the step to do the needful and show example to others. There are other areas of the workers' welfare that they also need to attend to. For instance, like promotions, they should give them as a own deal. If government make promises to workers, they should fulfill them. And there are promises made by government that are not being fulfilled to the workers. Nonetheless, of all the participants of the Federation, and Abuja included, in, on the issue of minimum wage, catering for the welfare of workers, and those three governments seems to be showing the direction. Mm. And I am glad because I'm, I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very, very proud of my state. All problems cannot be solved in one day. But the concern, the genuine concern, is the most important. They may not have the resources to solve all the problems at once. But they have demonstrated over and over again that what some people think is not doable in Edo is doable. And kudos to the government and the people of Edo State. Where I am today, I can tell you, people respect me within the workforce here because whenever they hear of Edo, they pour a lot of economy on my government and by extension, it comes to me. 
But that's not to say others do not need to learn. They have to learn fast. So why thank you, Mr. Governor, for what he has done and what he will continue to do? I want to urge him that 70,000 is good. But like Oliver Trois, and those state workers will be willing to earn a living wage. And if a wage is agreed later than the federal government, I do believe and trust that Mr. Governor will do the necessary adjustments. Kudos to Edo State and the good people of Edo State. I'm yeah. proud. Yeah, kudos to Edo State uh, workers and also to the state government. Now, yes. uh, the issue of the national economy is an issue because most workers are concerned. They, 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 they understand they've accepted the fact that the, the government means well uh, for workers in the state. But uh, the national economy is an issue, uh, a situation whereby the national economy is there. So uh, to what, ex what is now the, the essence of uh, the importance and the significance of uh, you know, taking minimum wage from 40,000 naira to 70,000 naira? Well, it's just, to me, it remains a step in the right direction. At 30,000 naira and up, we are switched some of the pains of the level one, of grade level one, step one. And I know that is going to consequentially be adjusted. Government will consequentially adjust it for those on the higher ladder. Mm. However, I wish to preach to government this morning that the percentage increase they have adopted for level one, step one, should go across board in that manner. Because if you give level one, step one, 70,000, and maybe it's a percentage of uh, uh, almost a hundred percent, so to speak. Let's say about seven, uh, about eighty percent of mm. the votes, so mm. to speak. Mm. That percentage should go across board. It must not be a matter of consequential adjustments that will favor those on grade level one to six. Then, consequentially, it starts dropping. The percentage starts dropping for those from grade level seven and above. So they should do the needful. The, the national economy is not helping anybody. But that is not to say the step the government in Edo has taken is not a better step. It is a better step. It may not be the best yet. And I know when there is a national consensus by the Tripartite Committee on the National Minimum Wage completes its assignment and the new minimum wage as empowered by the Constitution is derived, as a governor, I trust, will do the needed adjustments. Now, this consequential adjustment you talked about, if it is allowed to run across board, across all grade levels, don't you think it's going to be a huge, uh, that's going to be a huge one for the governor? It's not huge anything. It's not huge anything. It's not huge anything. Governments have received a lot of uh, uh, financial uh, support from the federal level over the, over the past few months. And I do understand that uh, we have a governor who is a technocrat who will make pronouncement on financial issues when he has already done his own work. Mm. It must not be a politicized announcement. It must not be politicized. That's why I'm raising this issue. If you have done a percentage increase, let it go across board. So that those who are on higher grade level, who even have more responsibility, more challenges, both officially, domestically, family-wise, should be able to feel the impact. And they should also quickly make sure it affects the teachers of Edo. For instance, the private school teachers. Mm. Because the last one they did, the private school teachers suffered some months of losses. So they should make sure it comes across everybody. What is good for the girls must be good for the Ganda. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying this all in the beach to keep Mr. Governor aware that they should not allow what happened in the past to repeat itself. Whereby, when they brought 40,000 minimum wage, all other workers enjoyed it, and the private school teachers were not given it until after a while. And the ideas will never be the parents to discuss. So they should just, the Office of Health and Service knows what to do. And I'm sure he's a knowledgeable and somebody I respect a lot. They should just make sure everybody is carried along at once. And most importantly, the percentage increase, Mr. Governor should try his utmost best to make sure he goes through the entire echelon without any adulteration. Because one thing is to make a pronouncement, and by the more people start hearing, oh, Mr. Governor made a pronouncement of 70,000 naira, mm. and now they have given to level one to six, level seven, they give them uh, 10 percent. No, it will, be, it will be somehow, and it will have a, political, a lot of political implications. Notwithstanding the fact that this year is an election year, yeah. I am not, uh, I, I, I don't want to speak here by, uh, by negative uh, readings to be coming from any angle. 
However, our people decide who they want to govern them. All right, so we, we, we want to say a very big thank you uh, for joining us on the show today and a happy Workers' Day one more time. Thank you so much. Okay. I love Ado State. I love all of you and God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Money Mike Modesty.